Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Allah, the, Allah the All-Gracious, the All-Merciful. Hello to you all, dear uh, viewers. Thank you again for uh, being with us. This is another episode of our uh, course about communications and also propagations. Uh, if you remember in the, our previous discussions, we talked about different uh, models of communications and also the types, elements, and factors of communication and a good communication and how to be uh, influential and how to be effective in the target audience. In our today discussion, we will talk about another uh, model of communication. Yes, uh, in our previous discussion, we talked about the model of uh, Aristotelian model and also the model of uh, uh, Laswell, which are two fundamental, uh, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, models of communication. Today we will talk about the uh, Shannon and Weaver's model. You know, Shannon and Weaver model was uh, coined in 1949 one year after Laswell's model, and this is mostly uh, actually a mathematical model. But it is very instructive and it is very helpful to understand the process of communication. In uh, Shannon and Weaver model, uh, we have uh, five elements in addition to uh, two additional. Uh, at the first instance, uh, in the Shannon and Weaver model, we have information source. The first uh, step is the information source, or in another term, it is the, uh, as a matter of fact, the sender who is sending a message, who intends a message in his mind. So, first we have information source. Second, we, secondly, we have a transmitter or encoder. Encoder uh, or transmitter are uh, two names of one uh, a step after information source which means that uh, when the message is intended by the uh, information source it will be encoded to some uh, symbols and after that those symbols will be sent via a channel so the according to this uh, model the third element is channel, okay? So information source, transmitter or the encoder, and uh, the encoder sends a signal. This signal can be of different types. For example, uh, sometimes it is a digital signal, sometimes it is uh, some audio signals, some visual signals, okay? These are, they are different, okay? Signal is a general uh, noun or gen general term for anything that can be transmitted via a channel. And the third element is channel. And through this channel, the message which is encoded to some signals will be received by a receiver or decoder. So when uh, information source encodes the message into some signals, after that, via channel, the receiver will get the uh, signal and will decode it to some uh, target messages and that messages will be uh, taken to the receiver, to the destination. So, we have five elements, information source, transmitter or encoder, channel, receiver and destination. This is the uh, linear, as a matter of fact, model. In the issue of the channel, there is one point that uh, Shannon and Weaver mathematical model points out, is that the noise which effect affects the source. He says that in the channel, when you are sending the message, encoded message to a receiver, there is the probability that the uh, in channel or in the way to uh, reach to the uh, decoder some noises some interrupters some as a matter of barriers 
comes up and affects the process of communication and these noises must be uh, as a matter of fact uh, avoided and we have to keep refrain from these uh, noises these noises can be of different types we have talked about about the barriers and noises sometimes it is linguistic sometimes it is based on the signals for example when you are watching a tv channel you see that because of the weather conditions i don't know the weather is stormy this is rainy i don't know some something like that so the movie you are watching is uh, noised so you see the um, uh, images on the TV and the videos and the clips uh, you know, distorted so this can be a noise you know the weather is a noise here okay sometimes the sender has problem for example the sender cannot send the message properly sometimes the receiver has problem for there is no problem in the sender the receiver has problem this is also a noise so between uh, encoding and decoding which the channel exists this channel sometimes can be in problem and this will affect the process of communication this is uh, the as a matter of fact uh, main first and the foremost elements of the uh, as a matter of fact the model of Shannon and Weaver in this chapter, Shannon and Weaver, which are, uh, as a matter of fact, two, two scholars of communication, and the, this model is named after the, after the inventors who have, as a matter of fact, uh, coined this term. There are some also uh, other points in the issue of the uh, noises. He says that sometimes in noise, there are some issues that we have to consider that there are sometimes redundancy, the problem of redundancy in the noise uh, sources. I mean, uh, for example, one of the noises is that you send a message and this message is sent several times without intention. So this is one of the noises of the, as a matter of fact, uh, the process of communication and also the sometimes the noise is the capacity of the channel itself sometimes you want to send a message which is very uh, higher in capacity than the channel itself okay suppose that you want to send a movie a clip which is for example one gigabyte through a, an internet connectivity which has for example uh, I don't know 512 kilobyte speeds less or more and etc so the sending of the process can be in problem because the message that you are sending the capacity is higher I mean the um, as a matter of fact it cannot be sent easily through this channel but when the channel is for example uh, 60 megabytes of internet connectivity so you can send it very easily and in, at the appropriate time and space so the channel capacity can be also by itself can be a noise in um, one uh, area of the discussion of uh, as a matter of fact Shannon and Weaver he brings a new term which is very important in the issue of the encoder and the decoder. He uh, talks about one term, one expression, which is field of experience. What does it mean, field of experience? This is very important to know that field of experience is the commonality between encoder and the decoder. What does it mean? It means that if we suppose that, for example, this is a encoder sends a message, and this is the area of the decoder. Okay. If the encoder and decoder cuts each other in one area, which is common between them, it it will be named 
field of experience. Field of experience means the commonalities between the source and the receiver, or the sender and the receiver, or the encoder and the decoder. What is the benefit of knowing this term? He says that, he mentions that if there is no field of experience between uh, the commonality between the encoder and the decoder, okay, the process of communication will be interrupted. What does it mean? Again, more interpretation. For example, you are living in a non for example, this is just an example, non-Islamic country, and I am living in an Islamic country, I send you a message, okay, which this message in my field of experience, in my area of education, in my area of the culture, is very familiar to the Muslims. But when I send it to a non-Muslim, okay, he or she has another field of experience. He or she has another, uh, as a matter of fact, educational sources and also educational levels. So maybe he or she cannot understand me because my field of experience is totally different of uh, him or hers. So this is very important. But when we have common points, for example, when I talk about Hereafter, okay, when I talk about hereafter or the resurrection, since this is a common concept between us, so we can understand each other somehow. But for example, when I talk about uh, one concept like uh, Erfan, mysticism, or one topic about uh, prophethood, prophethood, mysticism, Erfan, or these types are not common between us and them. Because in our terminology, for example, Jesus the Christ is a prophet, he is among us the prophets, but in the Christians, for example, non-Muslim country, Jesus is not a prophet. So since we here lack the common sense and commonality and the field of experience, we will be in problem. So in Shannon and Weaver model, of communication, which is somehow linear and which is of uh, five, uh, as a matter of five, five uh, sections. So we have another additional cop uh, you know, concept, which is about the field of experience, and the field of experience uh, cuts each other f uh, from both sides of the sender and receiver in one point, and that one point is the commonality between them and. Due to that commonality, they can understand each other. How much this common sense and commonality is this area and this zone is higher and bigger, the amount of understanding is better. And how this is smaller and lesser, so the amount of understanding, the way of understanding will be lesser and will be uh, as a matter of in problem. So this was one of the points that is very important in Shannon and uh, Weaver model and we have to pay attention to that point. So I invite all, the, all those who want to gain more uh, knowledge about this issue, they can refer to, as a matter of fact, uh, they can search this name and get more information. I hear just uh, talked about general points about uh, this model. Another model that I'm going to talk about, which is our fourth uh, model of communication, is the model of uh, Wilbur Schramm's model. Wilbur Schramm's model of communication is, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, invented as a matter of and talked about and established in 1954 by Wilbur Schramm. I can say that uh, the middle of the 20th century, I mean between 1940s to 1970s, is the climax of the communicational discussions. I mean in these 20-30 years, you see the uh, 
most uh, fever of talking about models and theories of communication because after the Second World War, the issue of communication, the issue of contacting each other, the issue of uh, public relations enhanced and the uh, people and the scholars and the scientists uh, as much of like uh, forwarded their attention toward this discussion which was very new and which was very attractive and it was very young so at, uh, I can say it's better so it's, it was like a newborn baby so they needed to theorize this uh, field of study so you can see in this period of 20-30 uh, years between 1940s to 1970s majority of the communicational models theories and also ideas have been proposed by different scholars in Wilbersham uh, we have uh, somehow similar concepts to the former ones but this is very cyclical if the uh, last Wells model or the uh, Shannon and Weaver model was somehow linear, in this model it is very cyclical. He has divided his model into two parts. And each part categorized in th themselves in three levels. So, first of all, he has divided into two parts his model like two boxes and in each box there are three points and these boxes are connected to each other at the top from the uh, as much of like from one side to another and from top and the bottom side from the second to the first so i will talk about that he says that if we want to uh, theorize this model he said that at the first box we have encoder interpreter and decoder all these three all together in one box encoder interpreter and decoder but the encoder is on the top interpretation is in the middle and decoder is on the bottom at the other side we have uh, as much of it the, uh, the other box Contrary to the first one, at the top is the decoder, then interpreter, and then encoder. This is very meaningful because when at, from the first box the message is sent to the second box, okay, to the second uh, level, level or stage, okay, the top point must be encoder. And from the second part, the first one can must be decoder decoder to decode this encoded point so in uh, Wilbersham's model in the, the two boxes are connected to each other they are interconnected but that the first one encoder is at, on the top and he sends a message and it will be decoded at the second box then it will be interpreted and then the interpretation of the message which is sent by the first box will be encoded to another message so it will be cyclical it will be encoded to another message it will be sent to the first box again as a feedback then in the first box the bottom side was decoder decoder of the encoder of the second box so it is very cyclical and it is very dynamic so, and it says that when uh, as a matter of fact uh, in the Wilbersham's model he says that as a matter of fact uh, the first box will be connected to the second box and each box is of different uh, types inshallah in our coming session I will talk about this uh, model more until the next program assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh